Hello, my friends. I am LCU. Welcome to the mythical city of Omega. Maybe you were searching for this place. Maybe circumstances have led you here. Maybe you just appeared here. Who knows why the city calls to us? Why it brings us in? Do you know why you are here? What is your reason for searching for Omega? Because we all search for Omega. We just don't know it. Will you find out when you're here? Or will you fight it all the way? Well, hello there, Apple Bites. This is your Apple Bite, Rafael Tavares, talking to you straight from our show here, The Written Writ. A show where you and I, and I and you, take a journey together to become better writers. Yes, it's time for some Vampire the Masquerade. And yes, like I promised, here's the episode. I put it on. It's the next week. Hey, don't you like me keeping my word and stuff like that? Well, here you have it. Vampire the Masquerade. It's funny because after I said this, all of a sudden I realized that on October 13th, 1999, yes, I'm kind of dating myself here, I joined a group on Yahoo Groups called Vampire the Masquerade because I was looking for more Vampire the Masquerade to enjoy. Because you see, I started off with a group of role-playing friends that I had on a tabletop version of the game, and it was just fantastic. It was different. It was being able to be the monster instead of the hero or trying to deal with the monster inside of ourselves which is, I found very interesting, especially as a writer, because sometimes, you know, your hero is not the goody two-shoes that people think he is, or, you know, in the hero's journey, we deal with many things, um, and these things make us who we are. So how do we deal with these challenges that come across? And this would be a challenge. If you got turned into a vampire, how would you deal with it? How would you deal with the horror of having to drink blood? What would you do? Would you still be yourself? Would you give in to the monster? These are all things that the game itself like really instilled in me, um, really like let me play through. These are really like interesting concepts. What would you do if you found yourself in this situation? Would you still be the good you or would you let it all corrupt you and move you to another person. <laughs> and that's why I love the game so much. And after playing the tabletop game, I was like, I need to go somewhere and have more of this. And that's how I ended up at this Yahoo group on October 13th, 1999, which the anniversary just passed recently, which is interesting. Well, depending on when you're watching this, if you're watching this before Sunday the 13th, then it hasn't passed yet. If you're watching this after Sunday the 13th, then it's passed. <laughs> See? Well, there you have it. That's the explanation. I started, I jumped onto this group um, 20 years ago. 20 years. And we started to play. And it was an interesting thing because the game usually works a certain way. The mechanics of Vampire the Masquerade usually works a certain way. Well, at least this version of it or maybe even the version that we have now but this is the one i'm talking about here um second and third edition i love the universe i love the world that came with this vampire the masquerade I like this whole apocalyptic thing that was happening that the vampires would were becoming less and less diluted i guess as each generation um came along you know the more uh, generations um you were up like if you were 13th generation, you were just a weaker version of the vampires themselves. And I say all this because one of the things that this group did was when we first got in, the first um, 13 of us, which is just getting creepy there, right? 13, 13. <laughs> so the first 13 of us were coming in as generation four, which would put us right under the third generation and if you know any of the stories from the vampire masquerade that is pretty powerful you're really underneath um i guess those who have made the clans 
and it was interesting to me because I hadn't played this powerful of a vampire before and I liked the idea of having to create my character, create the backstory of this vampire who's been around for so long, who's um, very powerful. What, what has he done with his life? Who was he? Where, why are we where we are now? What's been his journey to get to where we are? And I decided to create a character called LCU very ancient vampire who's been around for a very long time and I took bits and pieces of things here and there I took some parts of um, all the stuff that I know which would be uh, a lot of supernatural stuff a lot of angel stuff a lot of um, Bible stuff a lot of I have a big history of really diving into the supernatural which is so weird because <laughs> um, I guess most people wouldn't think me as horror but I do like the horror aspect of things I think I like my version of it uh, or what I like you know and I, I like the whole supernatural aspect of things like delving into it like mingling into my stories I think you can see it in a lot of the stuff I do that I do touch upon the supernatural so I took LCU this powerful um, fourth generation, I think I, if I'm remembering it right, and um, gave him the backstory, um, how he's been around, how he's been trying to um, fight the beast within and become a better person over it because he was a gangrel. And uh, as we all, man, you may not know, you know, the gangrels in Vampire the Masquerade are very. Um, beast natured if they give into the beast they get um beast um features you know so if you give in too much you become more and more of a monster as you keep giving into your beast and allowing these animal parts to start popping up on you and else you had decided to um find this path where he would be able to control the beast and that's where he went in the direction that he went yeah so see as you're looking at it um i started creating the character i started doing this whole character creation and it really opened it up for me not that i hadn't done anything like this before in D, &D or in writing or in any of that it's just that because of the game it made me sit there and really think about this character his backstory what's going on who he is um what's his faults why is he on his path um why does he create omega city all this is important and this is all coming from the creation of just the character and the Omega City thing didn't happen until after the game that I was on with these guys as playing this powerful vampire um, became, I guess it fell apart. It fell over. We weren't playing it anymore. And I wanted to continue this world. I wanted to continue this character because I, I just really enjoyed it. I enjoyed playing him. I enjoyed um, all the stuff I had created for him. And I felt like it would be a waste not to like continue it forward. And I took that, took LCU, and he, remembering um, this peaceful city of vampires trying to coexist before. I don't remember the name of it right now. Uh, maybe I'll pop it up on the screen or something. We'll see. And he took all this knowledge, all these people that he had met over the years, all this mythology that I know, and I and started to play with things. And... Omega City was created and Omega City is a mythical city that is almost sentient it lives it be it looks out for people who need to come to Omega City or looking to come to Omega City or looking for something different and in creating Omega City I wanted to do to play or be able to play anything or have anybody come in and play anything so I created this environment where all these um, races, clans, creatures, people could be together in one place and have to deal with each other without having to deal with, I guess, the masquerade in the way it was set up in Vampire the Masquerade. 
um, or trying to like hide it because in Vampire the Masquerade you're a vampire you're trying to make sure that nobody finds out you're a vampire and I took the whole aspect and I went a different direction with it because I wanted to see what would happen in this world where you know vampires exist where you know werewolves exist where you know oh, and you're coming into this and the way I had set up the city was that the city would pull you in. You would never know when it would pull you in or why it would pull you in or what was going on. Some people were pulled in because they were searching for the city. Some people were pulled in because of events that were happening. Other people was, were pulled in because the city pulled them in. And the whole thing was to figure out why were you pulled in? What was the reason you came to the Omega City? Unless you knew why you were coming. But it was important to find out because the city pulled you in for a reason. You know, life has a reason. Even though we don't know what it is, we are always searching for it. And I figured in this way, we can keep searching for it. And as you can tell, a lot of this stuff came together and made me a better writer because I had to make sure that my character was created a way so that I knew the character and I knew which way to go with him and what stories I would do. That in turn maybe create a world where I can have all this stuff happen. I was also wanting a more freestyle type of role play. So I wanted the people to come in and I would just use their stories or whatever, whoever they were outside and bring them in and try to make them part of the world. And I knew why they were brought in or I knew what was going on or they just had to deal with the situation as it was when they came in. It makes for a lot of drama, it makes for a lot of writing, it makes for a lot of creativity. And it was incredible. It was an incredible game for as long as we played it. I kind of got burned out near the end because um, I was doing a lot of the, of the writing for everybody and that can get to you after a while. And I had stopped writing my own stuff because I was writing all this stuff for the game itself. But again, that was good because it just kept me creating, it kept me doing things. I even have a little book here because I wanted to make sure that I, I covered everything. And it looks like I'm on track here. Uh, when the game fell apart, uh, you know, again, I'm not saying the D&D &D didn't, te didn't teach me all this stuff, but because I had to stay so present in the game, of Vampire the Masquerade, I had to get creative all the time. Uh, there was constantly characters coming in. I probably shouldn't have had so many people playing, but I did have a couple of assistant storytellers for a while, and that helped out. You know, the only problem happened was when I was doing the game by myself. And I can see why these games usually are only made for a certain amount of people to play, because um, it is a lot to keep track of. <laughs> um, I get here, which is what I was just mentioning. Vampire the Masquerade forced me to adjust with the players to be more thorough on what I was creating, especially side characters or as much info and char information on characters as I could bring. So even if it was a side character, I had to make sure that that side character had all his stories together because you never know which direction the player is going to go. The player may be like, well, you may be trying to lead the player in a certain direction of this character um, and who you have all the story for. And they'll decide that they find this character, the maid, more interesting. And now you have to figure out what the maid is or who the person is. So I decided that any character I threw in would have a great backstory or would, I would make sure that I knew who that character was. So in case they went in that direction, the story would flow better. One of the things that helps out when you're doing a writing type of um, role-playing game, because we weren't playing, like, um, I guess, at the moment, it was that, you know, you, you can sit back, look at the post that they wrote, and then work with that to figure out which direction you were going to go. Sometimes it was pretty quick. Boom, 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 boom. Sometimes I would sit there and go, okay, what, are we, what am I going to do with this? Well, where's this thing going? And it's funny, because I feel like it's one of the, it's how I started with the challenge. Um, they would challenge me with their character on what they wanted, on what the story was, and then I would go along with it. And that's uh, where the challenge comes from. I, at least I feel like that. Well, that's where it is. I think I've covered everything here. I, I, I do love Vampire the Masquerade. It's an incredible game. I like my second and third edition better than the more recent ones, but, you know, I'm not saying that the more recent ones aren't any good. I just like these games a little better. 
you know, I've, I've played a little bit of the more recent ones and they look pretty interesting. I just like the story aspect, the, the world story of it more than the other one. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know. Oh, and um, going back to um, previous episodes, you know, like I've told you, one of the best things to do is, is to play in somebody else's sandbox. Play in somebody else's universe. This is amazing because the amount of information you have for this universe, especially if you get the books, is is intense. You know, it helps you out. You know, you don't have to plan every single aspect of it, of your world out because it's it's there, and you can use this as a way to make yourself a better writer by being more creative, by just letting your writing flow because you already know what the universe is, you know what's going on. So all you have to concentrate on is your character and your story that you're telling. And that's why I say playing in somebody else's sandbox and somebody else's universe can help you as a writer because it's just makes life a little easier if you don't have to create your whole world, the whole universe. And you just go along and play with it. I am hoping, you know, especially since Halloween is coming up, that you've enjoyed our Vampire the Masquerade episode. And I, I have a feeling you guys have a lot of questions. Ask me. Let me know what you what 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 the questions are, what you want to know. You know, you can always put them in the comment section down below. I am free to answer any of your questions. Uh, I love talking, writing. I love talking. So, if you want to know questions, if you have any questions about Vampire the Masquerade, about writing in general, about world creation or character creation. Um, because it's all important, you know, it's, it's important for you when you're writing because you have things to draw upon. So with that, my friends, I will say, till next time, <laughs> where it's still Halloween or Halloween coming up, and who knows what I'm going to do next. It may be something more macabre. <laughs> You get it. Adios. Well, hold there, Apple Mighties. Yes, you have it. There was my Vampire the Masquerade episodes. I hope it was as fun for you as it was for me. I really enjoyed it, and I know you did, so give me the thumbs up. Or if you have a bunch of questions, like I was saying, you can write them there in the comment section down below. And make sure to hit that dingy dingy bell down there. That way you know when the episodes of Written Writ come next or come forward, or come to you. <laughs> yes, and with that, I shall say one more thing. See how I did that? Yeah. But wait, there's more. <laughs> if you guys want me to cover something, if you guys want me to talk about something, if you guys want, I, it's the written writ. This show is for me and you to become better writers, so let me know what's going on. Um, I have more challenges coming up. Uh, I have a buttload of challenges coming up. Uh, they are in the works and all ready to go. I have my next episode with Shadow Rabbit, where I have written a story for the Shadow Rabbit on Shadow Rabbit. And he has made the characters for these stories with his amazing hands sculpturing prowess so I can't wait to go to Suffolk County Comic Expo and see what we have because we are going to bring you the episode straight from there a special episode or part two of written writ called Shadow Rabbit and maybe you saw the Hugbert episode because Hugbert is a blast to do and I'm going to do something with Hugbert well there you have it keep tuned in to the same written writ channel at the same written writ time at the same written writ Ralph <laughs> and yes I know I'm talking a lot I'll let you guys go till then adios